Good morning, my dear, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May God be with you this morning and throughout your entire life, however long that may be. Yes, we're still here, but yes, we're still excited knowing that it could be any day. We don't know, but he is coming. We just don't know what moment it is. But every moment we have, has he not given us more time to ready ourselves, to be prepared? And has he not given us more time to help somebody else? We are Christian soldiers. Put on your armour. Every day, remember your armour and remember your sword. The word of God is our sword. So always go fully armed and fully protected. Now, I would like to just give you a very brief, um, I guess a hint of how to handle what's coming against us. We are in a battle, not with the flesh. We are battling against the principalities and powers in high places. In the spiritual world, we are at war. Oh, darlings, it's all real. There are people who don't understand the spiritual world is real. We need to really understand that. We have angels dedicated to us that are battling on our behalf when we put on the armour of God and when we call on salvation. We have angels fighting the wicked demons for our souls. We are not in this battle alone. Though sometimes it feels like, wow, I'm taking some major punches here. We have God on our side. And he will never let us go. But are we saved? Salvation comes through the belief and the trust in the one that saves us. There are false teachings, and you have heard them. Wicked, evil, corrupt teachers and preachers who have told the world that they do not need to repent of their sins to be saved, that they simply say a little phrase, that's it. You and I know the scripture does not uphold that. Without repentance, there can be no salvation. Simply, if you did not repent, you did not accept salvation. Yes, it was offered to you. But if you don't repent, what does that say of you? That Jesus died on a cross. Your Lord and Saviour came to earth, lived a sinless life that you couldn't do. He was beaten for your iniquities. He was whipped for your sins. He hung on a cross till every single drop of his blood was spilt for your wickedness. He who was not sin took on your sin. And in doing so, all that believe in him shall be saved. But what does it mean to believe in him? You believe, as they rightly say, that you are a sinner in need of salvation. And you put everything on Jesus. He wipes away your sins. But everywhere it says, you are forgiven, sin no more, repent and sin no more. 
if who will not repent? These ministers that are standing up there, and you know who I mean, the ones with the purple hair and the rainbow clothing, telling their people in front of them also in the same iniquities, saying, we don't need to sin, that's works. He did it all, so we, we can go on and do what we want. They're giving them these two options. Number one, we don't we don't have to worry about our sins because no matter what we do, it's covered. And the second one is the prideful. We are not sinners. This is perfect. Doesn't matter what the word says, what we're doing is perfect. We are not sinners. Okay. If you're not a sinner, you don't need salvation. If you don't need salvation, you're not in Christ. You're not in Christ, you're not saved. The only way to the Father is through the Son. If you've rejected the Son, you just burnt the bridge that takes you to the Father. So you have created your own heaven and hell. An imaginary one. You're going to your imaginary one. Not to the one that God created. And do you know where that one is? You're going to the opposite place. Oh, these ministers, they're, they're wicked, they're evil. And God will deal with them. God will deal with them. We must repent. We must accept we are sinners. And we must go forward. And if somebody comes at us with this, you are sinning because you are repenting. You know, you are rejecting salvation because, no, they have rejected salvation because they've said they're not sinners. The prideful will have their place in the lake of fire. The repentant are the ones that go with the Lord. That last moment on the cross the sinner beside Jesus that repented he could do nothing else he could not do a physical repentance but he repented in his soul he admitted I am a sinner he admitted Christ was not a sinner he asked forgiveness and the Lord said you will be with me before this day is out in paradise. The repentant sinner went to paradise. The unrepentant did not. He had no promise of salvation. The Old Testament speaks of the unrepentant ending up in hell, being God's face turned against them. Ezekiel speaks of that, where God turns his face from those who continue in sin. Where he is so cross at those that are teaching people to live in their sins. Let me just find that for a moment. Right, now Ezekiel 13 um, I'm just going to read to you from 22 to 23. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand and ye shall know that I am Jehovah the Lord. Okay, what does that mean? He is against those who teach. You do not come out of your iniquity. But what will he do? He will find, well, not find, he will make a way that he will get the message to them. 
he will tell them himself. And this is him telling them himself. You do not need to rely on the words of a man standing at a pulpit or someone standing on a street corner. He will tell you the truth himself. This is the truth. This is the word of God. He will tell you the truth if you open his word. Now he says something else here. Just let me for a moment pause. Right, now this is again about repentance. In still Ezekiel chapter 14, but we're starting... I'm going to read a whole section. It's only a small bit I wanted, but I'll read the whole context. It's headed, um, Repent and Turn from Idols. Um, Chapter 14, verse 6 through to 8, if you want to follow on. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn uh, turn yourselves from your idols, that can be any sort of thing that's an idol, and turn away your faces from all your abominations, repent. For everyone of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him myself, and I will set my face against that man, and will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. He is angry at those who refuse to come out of their iniquity and sin, and he will tell them the truth, and he will cut them off if they do not turn from their wicked ways. Again, he will tell you the truth. This is the truth. This is Jesus. I am the word, the truth, the life, the light. This is the truth. He will tell you directly. You just have to read it for yourself. Do not rely on a priest. Do not rely on a pastor or a bishop or a street teacher. Do not rely on somebody who set themselves up as a a teacher, went to college and learned all these things. They learnt heresy along with the truth. You can't run heresy beside the truth. You must only have the truth. The traditions of men, the thoughts of men are not biblical. You need to find your truth in the word of God. This is the sword that you take into the world. Whenever anyone comes against you, it is the sword of the word that you can battle. You take your sword into the battle. You have all of your armour on, your protection. But not only is this your protection, this is your weapon against the powers of darkness. We battle not with the flesh. We battle with the powers in spiritual places. We must have our weapon and our armour. The word of God cutteth like a two-edged sword. The word of God is going before us. The word of God is the truth. This is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the word. 
In the beginning was the Word. The whole book is telling us of and speaking from Jesus. We must eat this. This is, this is our life. This is our truth. Because this is where our Lord tells us of himself. Very important, we must always remember, you cannot, you cannot find, you cannot find salvation unless you know you are a sinner. And unless you are prepared to walk away and not stay in your sin. Because if you wallow in the pig pen, you are destroying any chance of salvation. But the moment, this is the beauty of it, the moment that you step away from the pig pen, just as the beautiful story he gives us the illustrations, the prodigal son, he left his father's abode. I can do it on my own. I'm going to enjoy life. He left and he went into the wicked world. And he found it was wicked. He spent all of his resources. Everything the father had given him, he spent it all and ended up living literally in the pig pen, eating the pig's food, the scraps. And pig food in the old days was anything and everything. Pigs will eat anything, including human flesh. If you fall in a pig pen and don't get up, you can be in dire trouble. They're not sweet, cuddly creatures. Pigs can be vicious, foul creatures. It's like people raising snakes in their homes, letting the snake cuddle them. And then one day the snake is so big it suddenly realised, your food size or your child is food size. When it squeezes you, it's not a cuddle as you think. It's feeling how big are you? Is my tummy big enough for this? No, not yet. I'll wait a while till I grow a bit. Give you a cuddle a bit more. Not yet. Give you a cuddle. Ooh, that's a good size meal. And a snake will go on a diet for a while to make room, make sure everything's out of him. And then when he hasn't eaten for a while, he'll come back and give you a cuddle. Only this time his head will come down. And once he starts, you can't stop him. Whether it be your dog, your cat, your child, or if the snake is big enough, you. They do not love. A pig does not love. It is opportunist. They can be a nice little creature, but they're an opportunist and when they see something that suits them, they will eat it. And this is what spirits do when they see something that hasn't got the armour on, they will come after it. We are in a war of spirits. When we don't have our sword, we have ignorance and we can be led astray by any wind of doctrine. And for the prideful heart, to think that I don't need to stop what I'm doing, what I'm doing, there's nothing wrong with it. That prideful heart, the pride 
will lead that soul to tickling ears where they're justified in their own right and they never accept the truth of salvation. Don't let them fool you and if you see them starting to convince somebody you love, come back to that person you love. It may be a stranger, but we are to love all. Come to that person and say, you have been told this, but I tell you, the word of God says you must repent or you will remain in your sin. If you remain in your sin, all sinners will have their place in the lake of fire. So go forth, my little army. We are very few in a world of wickedness. And until the Lord comes, walk in the word. Be shod with the word that everywhere you step, you step on the vipers and you spread the word of God. For he is the one and he can conquer all. God bless you all, my darlings. God be praised in everything we do. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And may you walk in the strength of the Lord. May you have the armour of God and the word of God as your sword. And don't let anyone tell you you don't repent. Because without it, you don't have the Lord. Without the Lord, you don't have salvation. And without salvation, we won't get together on the cloud. And I want to see you there. And I want to see everybody you love there. And I want to see our Lord, who is our salvation. By his name is salvation. Yeshua in Hebrew means the salvation. Uh, Yeshua HaMashiach. Salvation, the salvation of God. It is his name. When you accept salvation, you accept his name. In his name is salvation. It is true. In his name is salvation. So let's all get together. Praise the Lord. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Let's praise him. God bless you all. I almost sprung out in song again. Oh, dear. So God love you. Oh, God love you. And may I see you very soon. Oh, he loves you so much. May we be together very soon. God blessings.